Okay, so in this video, my goal is to cover all the key topics in chapter two of AP Statistics so that you'll be able to basically ace your chapter two test and, you know, be, you know, feel good and be ready for, you know, what's to, what's to come in the rest of AP stats, even if you wait till the last minute. So I'm going to try to do this really quickly. Um, not, I want to say, I'm not going to say 10 minutes because I'll, I, I still want to make sure I'm clear and can explain everything, but maybe maybe 15, 17 minutes. I'm gonna try to shoot for that, uh, but let's see. Here we go. Okay, so um, there are essentially like nine, eight, 10 key topics, however you wanna look at it, um, that you need to um, understand in chapter two. Um, you wanna understand percentiles, like what they are, how to calculate them, and uh, know what they mean in context. Um, know your Z-scores, or your standardized scores, standardized scores. Again, understand what they are, know how to calculate them, know how to um, interpret them in context. Um, no linear transformations. Linear transformations. And that's just basically a linear equation where we have y equals a plus bx typically in um and in, in a stats class. No um like understand like what a density curve is. Understand the characteristics like the area and stuff. Um no of course the 68 95 997 rule. And then basically um, be able to like do calculate like be able to calculate calculate values in normal distributions in normal like situations. That's going to be a big bulk and set the foundation for like a lot of what's to come in the rest of this course. Um, and then ba ba and then also know determine from like you know a graph or data so determine from data if um if 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 like this whatever we're talking about if the data could be um a normal distribution determine from data if it could be normal. Now, um, I'm going to, you know, go through these in this example, which is why I have this problem here, because I love going through example problems to explain concepts. I think it really makes it all make sense. This is a perfect example that pretty much hits all of these. So here we have the distribution of scores on a recent test closely follows a normal distribution with a mean of 22 points and a standard deviation of four points. Okay, so if it's normal uh, and has a mean of 22, so mu equals 22, standard deviation equals four, let's draw a bell curve. The middle center will be 22. Um, and again, note this notation, n of 22, 4. This basically tells you that the mean is 22 and the standard deviation is 4 and that the curve is normal. Now, um, what's the proportion of students that scored at least 25 points on this test? So we're basically looking for the area to the right of 25. Since 25 is greater than 22, we know it's going to be like, what is this area? That'll help us. That'll, that's basically the proportion of total scores. Now, for this, we can just use technology, use your calculator, use distribution function, normal CDF, lower bound or left bound, 25, comma, upper bound, infinity, comma, followed by the mean, 22, comma, followed by a standard deviation, four. So know the syntax if you have an old school calculator, but if you have like a new one, it's gonna have like basically um, slots that say explicitly what to enter. So it'll be really easy for you to know what to do. And we get an area of about 23% or 0.23. So 
So for A, the answer is 0.23. About 23% about of them scored at least 25 points on the test. All right, B, what is the 31st percentile of the distribution of test scores? Okay, perfect, another percentile. Now 31st percentile, we're looking for the X value here that has an area of 0.31 to the left. And again, since 22 is the mean, that means 0.5 areas to the left of 22. So we know it's gonna be below that. So this is where we kind of go backwards. And luckily, and very conveniently, we also have a function for that. We are gonna, we're gonna use the inverse norm function. The first number you enter is the, is the area to the left. So we're gonna enter 0.31 comma, then you enter the, the mean followed by the standard deviation four. So only those three values, area to the left, comma mean, comma standard deviation. And bang, that gives us our X value right there. The X will be right about 20. And that makes sense because it's less than 22. Um, again, uh, oh yeah, and also um, remember, don't worry about the, the rounding and all that and, and AP stats, they really don't care. It's not about that. It's not about that in this course. So don't freak out about like, oh, do I have to round to like the nearest 10th, 100th? Um, your answer is never going to be wrong because of rounding. All right, part C. The teacher wants to transform the test scores so that they have an approximately normal distribution with a mean of 80 points and a standard deviation of 10 points. To do this, she will use a formula in the form new score equals A plus B times old score. Find the values of A and B so, so that the teacher should use to transform the distribution, the distribution of test scores. So you can see this is um, uh, a linear transformation. So we're gonna have our new score be Y. So Y equals A plus B and our old scores will have them be X. So we're changing our X values to Y. So we're, used to, we're changing our original X scores to Y values. So for that, we need to know that when we transform means, so like the mean of y, will be equal to a plus b times the mean of x. This will be for the means when you're transforming means. For means, you're gonna need to add and multiply. Scalar addition and scalar multiplication. For um, measures of spread, so for standard deviation, so the standard deviation of y will simply be b times the standard deviation of x. For measures of spread, you only have to multiply by b. So to find a and b, we first start with the standard deviation. We want the new standard deviation to be 10. So we're gonna have set 10 equal to b times the old standard deviation. Going back to the first page, if you remember, it was four originally, standard deviation of x is four. So we have 10 is equal to b times four. So then we just solve this for b, divide by four, and we're gonna get b is 2.5. Now from that, we can then write the mean of y is equal to a plus 2.5x or x bar. And then we solve this for a because we know the new mean is gonna be 80. So we're gonna have 80 equal to a plus 2.5. And the old mean was 22. So then we just solve this for a. So we just do 80 minus 22 times 2.5. And we'll get that a is 25. So your answers are 25 for a and 2.5 for b. Okay, so 
Before the test, the teacher gave a review assignment for homework. The maximum score on the assignment was 10 points. The distribution of scores on the assignment had a mean of 9.2 points and a standard deviation of 2.1 points. Would it be appropriate to use the normal distribution to calculate the proportion of students who scored below seven points on the assignment? Okay, so this distribution of scores had a mean of 9.2 points. So let's assume that it would be normal. So let's draw a normal curve. The mean of 9.2, the so normal 9.2 comma 2.1. And this will be a good time to review like, um, if you know this last um, objective topic, if a data could be normal, also let's look at the density curve rule for a 68, 95, 997 normal curve. So the 68, 95, 997 rule tells you that if a distribution is normal, sixty-eight percent of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So negative standard deviation or negative one standard deviation, positive one standard deviation. Ninety-five mean tells you that ninety-five percent of the area lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So plus and minus two standard deviations from the mean. And the 997 rule basically tells you that almost all the area, 99.7% of the area, lies within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so what does that mean in this problem? Well, if the standard deviation is 2.1, we're gonna add and subtract 2.1 to 9.2. We would get 9.11.3 and let's see, 9.7.1. So that means in here, we would have 68% of the data. Two standard deviations more, from here to here, we would have 95% of the data. We would add 2.1 to 11.3, we would get 13.4. Take away 2.1 from 7.1, we would get five. And going one further, the 99.7 rule, we just add one more standard deviation, so 15.5 and take one standard deviation would be uh, 2.9. Well, now we can use that to basically answer the question. If, if this is gonna be normal, like then it would have to follow this distribution, this, these proportions approximately, but the max score was 10. And we're going way above 10. We already, we already go over 10 with one standard deviation. We go to 11.3 and 13.4 and 15.5. So no way, there's no way this could be normal. It's not even close. So um, it wouldn't make sense to use this calculation to you know, figure out this proportion. So no, exclamation point. Okay, so um, yeah, chapter two is not too hard once you understand this, um, this normal, distribution calculation with the Z score and standardized scores. It's actually pretty fun, I like it. And you, it's actually super important that you know it because it's gonna set the foundation for the rest of this course. And I'm right at 14 minutes and like 15 seconds. So I'm good. So I hope that helps. Um, happy, you know, studying, happy cramming. And let me know, you know, if, if there are any parts of this video where maybe I can clear it up, um, leave a comment or, and, or leave a like, of course. And let me know what you guys think. Um, and subscribe, of course. So I'll see you guys next time.